Right now at 10, a tough loss for the Badgers, making it their fourth straight Rose Bowl loss. We are live in Pasadena with the highlights. And it's relatively calm in the area surrounding the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad after two days of violent protests. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Happy New Year and thanks for joining us. Not a great start to the new year for Badgers fans after a one point loss at the Rose Bowl. We have team coverage tonight. News 3 Now's Madeline O'Neill shares how fans in Madison are coping with the loss. But first, Melissa Kim is live in Pasadena with reaction from players. Melissa. Yeah, Charlotte, you know, a very dejected group of Badgers coming off of the field tonight, and they really want to etch their name in Wisconsin football history, but they just made too many mistakes, and, you know, Oregon taking advantage of those mistakes. Badgers... Uh, some key points where they turned it around in the game in the Ducks' favor. Anthony Lottie fumbling the punt and Oregon's Brady Breeze scooping it up to score. And after that, it seemed like Wisconsin was getting in a good little groove after Jonathan Taylor had two solid runs. But then Danny Davis fumbling the ball. And after the game, JT and Chris Orr telling us it's just hard for any team to win after making mistakes like that. When you have that, those things happen in a game, uh, it'll definitely hurt you. Uh, Possibly slim chance you could win, but it definitely puts you in a tough position when you have penalties, self-inflicted penalties, special teams problems, uh, turnovers. So, you know, but when you're playing an elite team like, like Oregon, a great team like that, they're going to capitalize on those mistakes. So I think that was the biggest part on us is, you know, understanding that, you know, we, we, we should have had to clean things up. You can't, you can't expect to win a versus team uh, against like Oregon with turnovers, penalties, you know, special teams issues. So, you know, I think that definitely just played a factor in everything, not, not playing clean Wisconsin football. I mean, I think it's a, it's a combination of that. You know, it's a combination of, you know, the mistakes that you make. Not only um, people love to point out the turnovers, but, you know, it's not just that. You know, like we misfit some stuff on defense, you know. You, you have the little things that, that people don't notice, you know, when you're just watching the game. But I think it's a combination of, you know, them being a really good team and then us making mistakes as well. So not a lot of questions just between like who stays, who goes. And uh, we'll, of course, hear about that in the coming days. A lot of the players were not that ready to talk about that yet. But Jonathan Taylor did have some poignant words for the Badger faithful. We'll have that coming up a little bit later in sports. But first, I want to bring in Eric Franke now. So you talked to a lot of fans today. Tough loss, even for the fans. You could tell it, it was all over their faces. Yeah, let me tell you, it's fun interviewing fans <laughs> after a loss. That's a great assignment. And, uh, you know, it's like trying to catch up to them when they're on their way to a flight at the airport. Oh. They're about to miss their flight. But, uh, you know, it had all the makings of a great week. It kind of felt like the 90s again. Uh, tons of Badger fans out here. Beautiful weather, great tailgating, big turnout at the pep rally, the fan fest, all those things. But those turnovers, as Melissa alluded to, and the players did as well in their postgame press conference, just too much to overcome. Still, the fans, they were here to the very end of this one. The fifth quarter, a uh, huge turnout, great reception from the fans as well. They always stand by their teams in these situations. But, you know, in, in the end, chasing those fans down to get their thoughts on a Badger loss, their fourth straight in the Rose Bowl, uh, no way to sugarcoat it. It wasn't a lot of fun. Still, despite the painful nature of the loss, they know it's still not a bad season when it ends in Pasadena. Fun week. It's a blast. You know, the, the whole stadium and everything here, it's a very fun venue, you know. We're, we're just here for fun at first, but once uh, the game gets going, you get a little more into it. We're obviously a little disappointed in the loss, but hey, maybe we can get like six more Rose Bowls. Maybe we get like one of the six. It was fun, yeah. yeah. The, the game didn't end up the way we wanted to. You know, it was kind of disappointing how they uh, turned the ball over a lot and just didn't play very well. I mean, they were they were still in it till the end, so, I mean, that was good. It was a great game. I mean, we didn't play the way we usually play. Missed a field goal, Hunter dropped the, the ball. I mean, it's not their responsibility, but uh, hey, great experience. We loved it. You know, we were here with a friend. And so a tough loss to a very, very fun week for all these Badger fans that are out here in Southern California. And you just know, despite four straight Rose Bowl losses, these fans, they will follow these uh, players anywhere they take them in the postseason. And for every uh, of the every one of the Badger fans that was here in the stadium, there were many, many more that were back home cheering for the Badgers in Madison and throughout the state of Wisconsin. And we go now to Maddie O'Neill, who's back in Madison, talking to fans who, well, they were looking for a little silver lining tonight. Maddie. A little harder here in Wisconsin than California to find that silver line, but we're trying trying our best. I will tell you the atmosphere after the game compared to during the game was really night and day. Of course, this place 
has really cleared out. You don't see a lot of happy fans. And can you blame us? This was a tough loss to swallow. But the energy here at Lucky's, though, was high until the end of the game. Fans say it was a fun game to watch, and they're happy the Badgers made it this far, especially after the upset loss to Illinois earlier in the season. Fans even say they think the Badgers outplayed the Ducks in many respects, except when it comes to turnovers, which we all know win or lose games and led to the disappointing one-point loss today. Not happy. I mean, Oregon beat us in the Rose Bowl several years ago. We lost three in a row, so it's been since 2000 since we won one, so it's just been... Not a good start to the year. A little disappointed, maybe a little cheated. That last call was pretty tough, but they gave it their best. You know, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way, right? And the ball definitely didn't bounce our way today, and it hasn't in the Rose Bowl in 20 years. Of course, losing to the Ducks, who beat us in our last Rose Bowl appearance in 2012, doesn't help. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom here at Lucky's. Fans say they were happy to watch a season with stellar players, including Jonathan Taylor, who broke his fair share of records this year. And fans tell me they're already looking forward to next season. And one of these years, I think, has to be our year. It will be. Maddie O'Neill reporting tonight. Maddie, thank you. <laughs> And that's the UW-Madison marching band rocking out to You've Said It All this morning in the 131st Tournament of Roses Parade. Of course, Bucky and the Badgers cheerleaders had their own float decked out with red and white roses. Hundreds of thousands of people were there to see the parade. There were horses, 39 floral decorated floats, 20 marching bands, and plenty of dancing in the streets along the five and a half mile route. The theme of this year's Rose Parade was the power of hope. To weather now, a mild start to 2020. Dave Caulfield has a look at your first alert forecast. And Dave, I have an 11 year old hoping for snow. <laughs> well, I think we could see some flurries or snow showers as we get later into Friday, but no real big systems on our radar for the next week to week and a half. And that could change, but as it sits right now, and uh, not looking like a very active start to the new year. Madison on the Edgewater Skycam, still pretty mild with mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures still in the upper 30s. They're really not going to move all that much as we get into the overnight hours, but with that wind chill, it does feel a little bit closer to the freezing mark. Still some 40s out there in Milwaukee, Janesville, Mineral Point, and Bosqueville, Prairie du Chien as well. Wind chills are in the 20s in some spots like the Dells and Juneau and Monroe, 30s in Madison and Janesville. So day planner showing those temperatures only making it uh, down into the mid 30s for lows and feeling like the 20s in some spots. So not as cold as we were to start off the new year and temperatures once again on the mild side tomorrow with highs in the low 40s with mostly cloudy skies. We'll take a look at our next chances for snow plus when temperatures get a little bit colder in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. A Janesville man is facing charges for firing off his gun from a balcony in celebration of the new year. Police found shell casings and a gun sitting in the vehicle of a parked car in front of a home on West Holmes Street and South Franklin Street that is west of the Rock River. They also saw blood in the car. A SWAT team executed a search warrant and detained three people. 29-year-old Zarek Hammett admitted to shooting off his gun to celebrate 2020. There were no injuries and the blood in the car was not connected to the incident. Now entering 2020, Wisconsin will of course be in the spotlight for the presidential race. It is one of the few states where the electorate is evenly divided so it could swing either way. That is the biggest item on the ballot this year, but there's also a race for the state Supreme Court. That'll be decided on Tuesday, April 7th, which is the same day as the presidential primary. In the fall, 99 members of the state assembly and 16 state senators will be decided. Relative calm has been restored to the area surrounding the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad after two days of violent protest that pitted U.S. security forces against Iran-supported protesters. CBS News' Hillary Lane has more from New York. Supporters of an Iran-backed militia retreated Wednesday from the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad after leaders said their message had been heard. The pullback ended two days of violent clashes at the sprawling compound. 
After breaching the wall Tuesday, protesters set fires and threw rocks and Molotov cocktails. Security forces held back the crowd, swelling at times into the thousands with tear gas and rubber bullets. The Pentagon deployed hundreds of additional U.S. troops to the region in response. President Trump spoke about the conflict during a New Year's Eve party. But we have some of our greatest warriors there. They got in there very quickly. As soon as we saw there was a potential for problem, they got in and there was no problem whatsoever. The violence erupted after an American contractor was killed on an Iraqi base. The U.S. blamed the Iranian-backed Shia militias and targeted several of their bases with airstrikes in Iraq and Syria, killing more than two dozen fighters. Tensions between Iran and the U.S. have risen in recent months, with Tehran feeling the full weight of the Trump administration's economic sanctions. All this escalation by Iran is proof that the sanction strategy is working. President Trump tweeted that Iran would be held fully responsible for any lives lost or damage at U.S. facilities. Iran's supreme leader responded Wednesday saying you can't do anything. Hillary Lane, CBS News. The siege had trapped American diplomats in the embassy compound overnight. New video tonight of a scary situation in Florida where an owner accidentally got a dog's leash stuck in an elevator. Surveillance video captured the entire thing. The owner is panicking, trying to free her dog when a doctor walks in carrying a plate of food. He doesn't waste a second and runs to help, jumping over and over to free the dog. Dr. Muhammad Awad says he is grateful he was in the right place at the right time. New at 10, a Milton English teacher is retiring and has to pay a $6,000 fine for defecating in a public park for more than two years. That's according to the Janesville Gazette. 60 year old Jeffrey Churchwell has been defecating outside of and on a building at Natureland Park in the town of Whitewater. The fines will go to the County Public Works Department, which cleaned all of those messes. Churchwell started working for the Milton School District in 1990, and his retirement takes effect January 16th. A Madison resident was the first person to buy marijuana from a dispensary in Rockford on the first day of legal recreational sales in Illinois. Trying to be number one versus number 10. Danny Connors was 10th in line when Denver legalized recreational sales. He ensured a number one spot in line in Rockford by arriving before midnight on New Year's Eve. It's freedom. When they ask me, what's it mean to you coming so far out, it means I don't have to look over my shoulder. Connors was not alone in his determination. Some camped out overnight in their cars waiting for the dispensary to open at 6 a.m. Illinois is the 11th state to legalize recreational marijuana. Gas prices are expected to stay steady in 2020. GasBuddy.com is forecasting prices will actually be two cents lower than last year at $2.60 per gallon, but that won't be true all year. Gas prices tend to rise as refiners switch to summer blends. GasBuddy predicts prices will be lowest in February and rise to a peak in May. Just ahead on News 3 Now at 10, there are many different ways to ring in the new year. For some brave people in Minnesota, that means jumping into an icy lake. We'll hear their reasons for doing that next.
A Monona family started off their new year by welcoming a new baby girl. Nora Madeline Elsmo was born at SSM Health St. Mary's Hospital early this morning. Her mom, Andrea, said she wasn't expecting to deliver Nora so soon, but says delivering one of the first babies of the decade is nice because it comes with those additional photos and memories from the press coverage. Nora weighs eight pounds and is 20 inches long, and mom, Andrea, was also born at St. Mary's three decades ago. The first baby born in 2020 at Unity Point Health Meritor Hospital was Jace Eli. He was born at 1.28 in the morning and weighed 6 pounds 9 ounces. Parents Ashley and Cameron are from Fall River. Well, some are plunging into their new year by shocking their senses. This is the 30th annual ice dive in Excelsior, Minnesota. Lots of brave people starting the new year with a dive into Lake Minnetonka. This year wasn't as cold as it has been in the past, but still very cold to be jumping in and out of the water. Some had good reasons for doing it. It is the best way to start off the new year because if you can dive into this lake, you can pretty much tackle any challenge throughout the year. Sounds like a good way to make sure the rest of the decade can't get any worse. Positive thinking. This ice dive not only gives you major bragging rights, but it raises money for the Wounded Warrior Project. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield joins us now with a look at our forecast. I mean, the water may be cold, but our temperatures were actually mm -hmm. pretty mild to start up bad. the first day of 2020. Almost said 2019. That's probably going to happen for the next three months. Uh, Middleton, Carol sends in this photo of the first sunset of the new decade and boy oh boy it is a fantastic one thank you so much for sending this and i just love the colors here and the reflection off of the pond there magnificent so doppler track is quiet across southern wisconsin we did see some snow activity well to the north across northern Minnesota and Wisconsin back into the Dakotas, but really I don't think we have much to worry about in the precipitation department. I think we stayed dry tonight into tomorrow. On Friday, a few snow showers and flurries are possible later on on Friday. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Speaking of snow, after uh, the snow that we got a few days ago, we still do have a little bit less than an inch of snow on the ground. Uh, for most of southern Wisconsin, north of Madison, those numbers go up just a bit. But with mild temperatures on the way for tomorrow, I don't know if we're going to see that snow on the ground for much longer. Live look in Madison on the Edgewater Skycam. Temperatures are still pretty mild right now. That 39 for the high today, which is about 10 to 15 degrees above normal for this time of year, is actually our current temperature. So we're staying pretty mild into the overnight hours as well. Typically in January, we don't move all that much as far as high and low temperatures are concerned. We start out the month with averages in the upper 20s and low teens, and that's where we end the month as well. The exact same numbers, in fact. We have been as warm as about 60 degrees back in 1880 and in the 1950s legendary minus 37 coldest temperature ever recorded in Madison and typically we see about a foot of snow but after a very fast start to the snow season we have really slowed down with our snow events and that means that our normal has sort of caught up to our seasonal snowfall so far but we'll see if we can add to that coming up next week. A couple of opportunities to maybe add some minor totals. Future track is quiet as we head into the overnight hours. Temperatures falling into the low 30s with partly to mostly cloudy skies. We're mostly cloudy on Thursday. Notice these temperatures once again, folks. Even though we have a lot of cloud cover, I still expect them to get into the low 40s, which is about 15 degrees above normal for this time of year. Then into Friday, our temperatures are cooler in the low 30s with some Flurry and snow shower activity possible later on Friday. I don't expect this to have a major impact and really it shouldn't drop that much snow, but uh, maybe less than a half an inch of snow for most of us. And I think southwestern Wisconsin could pick up close to an inch in some spots, but we'll continue to update that as this uh, week system sort of still developing on our models. So seven to 10 day forecast showing the threats of some flurries or snow showers late Friday. They could last into very early on Saturday morning, but the weekend looking pretty quiet with temperatures in the mid 30s. And we do have some opportunities for some light snowfall on Tuesday and Friday of next week. It does look like there's a short cold snap there where those temperatures head into the 20s for highs. 
Lucky us. Yay! <laughs> and you know, I'm thinking that the crew out there, like Melissa, she mm -hmm. just enjoy it. It's 54 degrees outside. Bring it back. Okay, Melissa, Bring it it's back. all on you. <laughs> okay, to be fair. Okay, to be fair, it's kind of chilly right now, 40-something degrees, no offense. But anyways, coming up in sports, we'll recap the Badgers' loss to the Ducks in the Rose Bowl. Stay tuned. We're right back after this. News Now, it was definitely a very quiet and somber Badgers locker room after the loss to Oregon in the Rose Bowl tonight. But Wisconsin, in every single straight statistical category, Wisconsin did beat Oregon on offense. But the numbers that matter the most tonight, the four turnovers and nine penalties. Very uncharacteristic of this team. But it started off way better. Opening kickoff here, Aaron Cruikshank with the ball, and he'll turn his legs on to fire mode. 95 yards to the house, his second of the season, and only the third kick return touchdown down in Rose Bowl history. We've got a tie game. We fast forward to the end of the first half. Now Jack Cohn looking and finding his favorite target. Quintez Cephas for the 11 yard score and the Badgers are in business. They're in the lead 17 to 14 at halftime to the fourth quarter. Now this was one of the pivotal points in the game. Danny Davis has the ball, but he will fumble the ball and Bryson Young recovering it for the Ducks. 
And then on the ensuing drive, Justin Herbert on the QB keeper for 30 yards, his third rushing touchdown of the game, and that would seal the deal for Oregon. Badgers lose at the Rose Bowl for the fourth straight time, 28-27 to the final, and head coach Paul Chris says they really beat themselves in this one. You guys put it out there, and yet everyone knows football. It's did some things that make it harder to win, and uh, we didn't overcome that. But uh, appreciate this team a ton, and uh, and yet would have liked to have finished it obviously differently. We didn't. And we just weren't as clean as we should have been. You know, they definitely capitalized on it. You know, hats off to them. It's a good team over there. Um, you know, whenever you're playing a good team and you shoot yourself in the foot too many times, you know, it definitely makes it harder and harder to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, still need to find a way to overcome that. Now, this loss obviously tough for outgoing seniors, seniors like Chris Orr, who you just heard from there, but also for Jonathan Taylor, who most likely has played in his last game in a Badgers uniform. JT finishing with 94 yards rushing, 43 yards receiving, but his impact on this program way bigger than those numbers. I asked him what these last three years representing the Badgers has been like, and he says he wouldn't trade it for anything. It's been amazing. You know, I, everyone always asks me about Camp Randall, but... Camp Randall is just a stadium. It's just like any other stadium, but it's the, it's the people that fill the stadium. It's the fans that take the time out of their jobs, their daily lives, day in and day out, to spend their hard-earned money to come and watch us, you know, play the game that we love. So it's definitely the fans that make Camp Randall what it is. And, you know, coming out here, I mean, they, we travel well. I mean, they made it feel just like Camp Randall today. And JT was one of the last players to leave the field here at the Rose Bowl to a rousing applause, a standing ovation from the Badgers fans that were waiting for him. He is definitely going to be one of the players that is truly missed from this year's team. That wraps up our coverage from the 106th Rose Bowl. I'm Melissa Kim. News 3 Now Sports. We'll be right back.
cloudy and mild tomorrow. All right, thank you, Dave. Thanks for joining us. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.